And so for me, my first book, being called A Liar and a Fraud by biological members of my tribe was just a very expensive thing. And it made me so very sad. And of course, you know, the book sold and made money and, you know, we were... It was a very successful initiative that won awards and, you know, Australian of the Year Award. I won a Pride of Australia medal. I got an award of distinction from, for services to humanity. I uh, got a Prime Minister's Award for Excellence. And I'm not a political person. You probably see, you know, that the, um, the Howard government was just in when my work got up. And, you know, I'm just eternally grateful that, that I was supported. But I refuse to get into any political arguments. You know, I look to put principles before personalities and politics. Here. But I suppose what I'm trying to say is, <clears throat> please, um, just just bear with me when I when I talk about the fact that um, when people reveal secrets, family secrets, relationship secrets, the truth is longer than a lie, and it it takes time to tell and lies are often um, what people do in order to stay safe because if your truth is unacceptable you have to lie and you know I remember being a little girl and I, you know I um, remember um, my mother was a hairdresser and women would come into the home, and this is why me, you know, sitting here with, because my hair was often called rat's tails, and the end of it is like rat's tails, but I, you know, so I normally curl it and primp it, and um, and, and I, um, my my older sister had amazing hair, and um, I didn't have hair like her, and, and was often told by my grandmother and my mother that, you know, a woman's hair is a crowning glory. And I used to see um, women come into my mother's, hairdressing salon at home was in, in the kitchen and I remember the black and white retro tile floor and and I remember seeing women come in with really low energy and uh and leave looking like goddesses you know and in the 60s I'm you know I was born in 1962 so we're, talk, we're talking the early 60s with all the beehives and French rolls and I remember this one woman sitting there and oh, I must have been three or four and she's talking about this cabaret she was going to and I remember I remember it was my first word of romance and I remember her talking about this cabaret and she was going dancing and she was talking about this sequin dress she had and you probably noticed I love sequins and sparkles and and she was talking about this cabaret and as she it was almost like this transformation as I watched her hair get done in this beautiful French roll and she left and I just was so enchanted with this beautiful word cabaret it was almost like a burgundy sparkly you know like how coca-cola in the light gets that burgundy black sparkly Anyway, it was just a divine word. And then as a little four- and five-year-old, I decided to make up tickets to a cabaret I was having in my imagination. And I went and knocked on doors and was selling tickets to cabarets. And I remember the neighbour came over to say to my mother, you know, and I was called Cindy in those days. My name is Cynthia and that's another whole vlog. But she's selling tickets to, you know, is she all right? And I remember being told off for telling fibbers and stories. And, and uh, that's when I first got told you know it was a bad thing to tell stories but for me as a little girl with so much insidious and you know, drama happening in the home and the pedophile next door and the incest in the home and I watched I watched stories be told I watched pretend stories be told all the time about what was going on in our family and I I realized you know that their stories were okay but my stories weren't and it just got very very confusing however my own internal fairy stories where there was enchantment and, it, and femininity was a beautiful thing because my little femininity was being violated inside of the home and outside of the home. And I Dream a Genie was a television show on at the time and Barbara Eden used to go into this little bottle where she would be in this amazing safe place. And I had that little genie bottle right down inside of me and I used to go in there when all the horror and the abuse was ugly on the outside I would fly the fairies in there in my soul and live inside of that, my imagination. And you see beautiful writers like C.S. Lewis, you know, The Witch in the Wardrobe, Narnia. You can see, you know, if you unpack his childhood, he had great torment. Robert Louis Stevenson, there's many great writers. George Bernard Shaw and you know, many, many of them 
Hemingway that were also raging alcoholics like me because their internal world became such a rich, rich place that saved their lives and saved their sanity. 